What's up everybody, this is Danny and I'm here at CES 2023. It's a packed house in there, it's crazy, tons of people, tons of tech. And if you've never been here before, don't worry, I got you. I'm gonna walk around in there and show you the best tech that you'll find here. Now, trust me on this one, this place is so huge, you could walk around for like four to five days and you still wouldn't see everything. But I'm gonna show you the best stuff that I saw at this show. Let's get started. The first place I had to go to is Tech West, where all the auto lives, and VinFast had a huge booth here. The press conference was super packed, lots of excitement around their EV lineup. They had the popular VF8 and 7-seater VF9 here on the floor that I saw in Vietnam, but I partnered with VinFast to show you their two brand new EVs, the VF6 and VF7. The VF6 is the most compact out of the two vehicles, but it still packs a punch. The design is very sleek, and I absolutely love this orange color, very eye-catching. The interior was surprisingly spacious and materials were also nice, the color combo was super clean. Big infotainment system with all the tech built in like level 2 advanced driver assistance system. The VF6 will be able to get 248 miles on a single charge with the Eco model and up to 201 horsepower with the VF6 Plus. I think where this car will come in price wise this will be a very popular entry into the EV segment but the one that I fell in love with is the all wheel drive VF7. The styling on this one really does it for me. The back is also one of the most unique designs that I've seen in a while. All of the curves and design cues that are classic VinFast are carried over here from their other models but I think this is the perfect blend. It could be my favorite. The interior is also on point. This car had a great red and black dual tone leather setup. It looked really nice and the stitching just gives it that little extra flair. Both of these models had a massive panoramic glass roof so it made it feel so open inside. Of course, all of that great tech built in with the center infotainment system that will have Amazon Alexa built in. The VF7 will have up to 280 miles of range with the Eco version and up to 348 horsepower with the VF7 Plus. So both of these look promising and is a nice addition to their vehicle lineup. Pre Order start in March for both of these cars in the US, so I will leave a link below for more details on pricing and how to pre-order. So next, let's talk about laptops. There were a ton of new laptops that were announced here at the show. Asus showed off their laptops that have glasses-free 3D screen tech in them. They will be in two laptops this year, and it uses these cameras up top to track your head movement and spatially adjust to give you that depth. I can't wait to try this when it comes out. Intel's new 13th gen processors were powering most of the new powerhouse laptops, including the new Razer Blade 18. I don't know why they stopped making 18-inch laptops, but I'm really looking forward to them. The Blade 18 has some cool screen tech. It has a dual mini LED display that can go from QHD plus 120Hz for content creation to 240Hz FHD plus that will give you that silky smooth gameplay. So this is amazing. The Intel 13th Gen HX chip should absolutely smoke in this since it has twice the efficiency cores and can maintain high clock speeds for longer. And paired with the new NVIDIA 40 series mobile GPUs, this should be a beast of a machine. And they also shut off this massive Kyo Pro Ultra. This is the biggest front facing camera that I've ever seen. Razer says it's the biggest sensor ever on a camera like this. And the quality was really great from this. 4K with this type of quality when you're streaming or video chatting, this is pretty sweet. But the laptop that stole the show for me was the Lenovo Yoga Book 9i. This has two 2.8K 13.3 inch displays and it is not a concept. This is releasing soon. I love this because you can use this like a regular laptop with the haptic enabled on screen keyboard. I also like how you can just move the keyboard down if you want to. If you want a physical keyboard, they make one which you can move to the top if you want to give you the biggest trackpad ever on a laptop. All of this seemed to be working well, how you can just move the windows from screen to screen. You can also use it like a book if you want with side-by-side -side windows, so it should be awesome for multitasking. You can even get a stand if you want and use it as a dual monitor setup on the go, so with an optional pen too, this might be the laptop that I'm looking forward to most this year. What do you guys think? of this. Would you use it? Let me know in the comments below. Lenovo also had the ThinkPad Plus Twist where there is an e-ink display to save battery on the other side and now it has a swivel to where if you turn it you also get that full OLED display. I know this is more of a niche product but I thought this was neat. 
There was also a ThinkBook here that had Poco pins on the lid of the laptop so you could magnetically attach peripherals like a larger and higher quality front facing camera, a 4G LTE module, and even a light if you want to chat in low light conditions. So Lenovo had some really cool tech all around. They also had brand new Legion gaming laptops that also utilize the new 13th gen Intel processors. So I'm sure they will be incredible. And they also had desktops there too. So their lineup looks fantastic for 2023. Next, it was off to South Hall where you're gonna find most of the big tech companies and let's start off with Samsung. There was a huge line to get in, but thank goodness I got to see a lot of this at the first look event before the show. Of course, it's not a Samsung show without TVs. I was really excited about seeing the updated QD OLEDs. This is the S95C and now in addition to the 55 and 65 inch, you get a 77 inch option, which is great because I own last year's S95B and that was one of my biggest gripes that it was only available up to 65 inches. But this year, everything gets a bump up, 144 hertz overclock, and it's much brighter as well. The picture quality is so on point, so I can't wait to get the 77 inch at home. Micro LED also got a consumer update. They've always done huge walls to show off this tech for commercial purposes, but this year they're targeting these into the home from practical sizes from 50 inches all the way up to 140 inches. The specs are absolutely wild with 240 hertz refresh, insanely bright, and the response time is two nanoseconds. Yeah, you heard that right, two nanoseconds. No pricing yet, but I'm betting this is going to be expensive, but this is very exciting nonetheless. Gaming monitors were also everywhere at CES 2023. Samsung announced their first OLED gaming monitor that is 49 inches. This is the Odyssey G9. The colors and brightness were off the charts, so it was hard to film this in a darker environment. It has that curve for immersiveness, and it looks so good. It is 240 hertz, so gameplay looked very smooth. 0.1 millisecond response time with a 32 by 9 aspect ratio. This looked huge on the setup until I saw the biggest of them all, the 57 inch Odyssey Neo G9. I mean, wow, this is absolutely massive. This is, I believe, a first with a dual UHD widescreen form factor. The big curve on this thing really makes the gaming experience amazing. I don't know how people are going to fit this on a normal desk, but if you're looking to buy one, then you might need a new desk. 240 hertz here as well, one millisecond response time. This was the definite showstopper, so you have to see this one in person. It was pretty awesome, so let me know if this is overkill. Would you rather have one monitor, or would you rather go with the traditional triple monitor setup? Let me know in the comments below. Samsung also showed off the answer to Apple's studio display, the 5K Vfinity S9. The design looked more like a refined smart monitor M8, but with a higher res display. I hope they price this one right so creatives can get a more affordable choice for a 5K monitor setup. So naturally after this, it was time to see what LG had at their booth, and I'm so happy to see the OLED setup return. Even though they have been doing this for years, honestly, I never get tired of this. It's impressive every time, and people just stop and stare at this. It's not CES without this, so kudos to LG for this classic. Of course, LG had TVs as well. The G3 OLED was their highlight with a super sleek design that is designed to be wall mounted. It's 70% brighter and has much faster processing this year. And they even had a transparent TV that wowed on the showroom floor. But the one that stole the show was the 97 inch LG Signature M3 that does wireless 4K 120. Seriously, this was super cool. Multiple signals are sent from this box right here. And just like that, a wireless signal that LG says that has no compromises. This opens up a lot of possibilities in the home. So you aren't confined to a wall or a media cabinet. This is LG's proprietary wireless technology that they said is three times as fast as Wi-Fi 6. They had an impressive showcase here at the booth at 97 inches and it being cutting edge technology, I'm betting this one will have a super hefty price tag. But this is incredible, something that I never thought was even possible. LG also announced their Ultra Gear OLED gaming monitor. This is the 45GR95QE. Whoever is in charge of these names, can we just get something simpler please? It is 45 inches with the 800R curvature, 240 hertz with a 0.3 millisecond response time. So gamers will have a lot of choices when it comes to ultra wide curved gaming monitors. The booth was packed with people trying out bikes amongst other things at LG Labs. There were sneaker NFTs and so much more. LG had a great booth this year. 
I wish I had more time to walk the floor. There are so many random things to see, like these robots, a ton of people trying out different VR applications. It can look a little weird when you're walking by. Lots of concepts for mobility everywhere you look, and even electric boats. CES is just packed full of gems. You even get companies like John Deere, which you would never expect to see at a show like this, but they are very tech heavy in their future roadmap. I got to see their electric excavator, which is in limited production right now, and it's amazing to see something like this electrified. The battery lives right here, and it's almost unreal to see the scale of something like this. And John Deere said this is designed to run for about 8 hours with small breaks of charging in between. They even showed off how you can bring a portable charging station to the job site, which I thought was neat. So it's cool to see companies like John Deere at the show as well. It's very diversified. You know me being a fan of smart home had to walk around the Sands Expo and this is where all the smart home stuff lives and as much as I hate to admit it there was just nothing that really caught my eye. Of course Kohler and other companies have amazing booths here but it was just a lot of the same. Don't get me wrong Govi had some cool lighting solutions that I think a lot of people will like but the overwhelming theme this year with smart home showcases were all about matter. It was just everywhere. Now I don't want you to think I'm being negative, compatibility and unification to smart home is something we definitely need so let's see how this goes this year. This gives a lot of brands compatibility with HomeKit which wasn't possible before so I'm excited about that. Ring did demo their in-home drone as well but it's definitely not ready yet but overall smart home was a little bland this year. Couple of things that I did see on my last hours on the showroom floor, I covered these on my Instagram, so make sure you follow me there if you want more of CES 2023. From everything from touch to open refrigerator doors to touch to open wall ovens, I got some cool stuff over there for you to see. So I hope you enjoyed that tour in there. I would have done this live, but it was so many people in there, I could barely move. I'm just getting bumped. I couldn't even hold the camera. So I had to present it that way, but I hope you still enjoyed it. Hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed this, and I'll see you guys at the next CES.